come. Walk down the winding path. Don't mind the spooks and monsters. They stay hidden within the trees. There are mysteries in this world that you need to know, and paranormal truths that need to be told. Come, step up into the caravan while we share tales of old, as well as new accounts about things you thought only existed in your nightmares. I would like to take this time to express my utmost respect to the country and people of Japan and everyone who has lost a loved one to suicide. These topics are never easy and never taken lightly. You are worth so much and you do matter. I will make sure to include help hotlines in our show notes. The following show covers Okigahara Forest and the stories of the Yuri and Yokai. Welcome back to the caravan, Mr. Vance. Well, hello. hello. You know, uh, I see you made new throw pillows for the couch here. It's rather <laughs> nice. Yes. And for those of you that soon. have not, well, yes, but for those of you that have not been in the caravan yet, um, it's rather warm and dry and very colorful. And the smell of fresh baked bread and <laughs> coffee. So thank Always you for the coffee. coffee. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, for of those course. of you that have not been inside the caravan yet, um, it, it is rather comfortable in here. And uh, <laughs> at least you moved over enough, so I have some room on the couch this time. But, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm looking on uh, the bookshelf here, and mm -hmm. this one looks. Let me flip through some pages. This is what appears to be. The uh, suicide forest of Japan. Wow. Did you read this book? You no. leafed through it, didn't you? <laughs> you know me, I skip through things. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes no, this is I do. really interesting. Suicide forest at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. Ooh, Better you want to talk about that as... for the caravan? The yes, it's known as Okigahara at the base of Mount Fuji. It's also called Jukai, which means the sea of trees. Oh, how beautiful! And mm -hmm. looking at the pictures in the book here, it, it seems like it's breathtaking looking forest. Mm -hmm. So, but it has a rather dark history behind it. So, it yeah. seems that it even continues to current times, I guess. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it was it actually, that... go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say there's a lot of dark energy there. And uh, I guess we'll go a little bit into the history as to why. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one of the crazy things is that this forest grew on lava beds. And so um, the terrain is extremely uneven. And mm. it's very easy to get lost in there, even if you're, you know, if you go in just for regular reasons, um, you definitely always want to stay on the walking paths because of how easy it is to get lost. Well, I would imagine being at the base of Mount Fuji that it would probably be very nutrient rich grounds oh, yeah. for like lush forest to grow. It mm -hmm. looks a lot different than forests uh, typical here in the States. Um, yeah. Trees it's like don't seem really to twisted. tower, you know. Right. Yeah. Very intertwined there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, wow. When it comes to the dark history, uh, in the research that I did, I found that it goes back actually really far. I forget that what the term was, but there would be certain families who couldn't take care of their elderly or who couldn't take care of their very ill. And supposedly they took them into the forest and left them there to die. But Japan has always kind of had a surrounding of 
you know, the suicide topic, because if you look at the uh, samurai, it was better to kill yourself than to be captured. Mm. Well, the suicide culture in honor, which also yeah. was uh, transparent and in the history books anyway, of the Kamikaze pilot in World War II, which I know that was a big threat to the American forces and the Allied forces as to what would bring an individual to the point that they would be willing to sacrifice their own life, mm -hmm. you know, for one attack on any kind of military installation vessel. Um, but right. it is part of that culture of, you know, die by honor. And even yeah. though we're not familiar with the die by honor culture, it would seem to me that if you are bringing your sick or your elderly into the forest, you're probably taking it from the perspective of bringing them to a peaceful, serene location that exactly. the norm for being, you know, in stress in the home or whatever. And you, you have to kind of look at it that way, too. You know, you would mm -hmm. rather, you know, pass on in a very peaceful and serene, natural environment. And it would probably make the sick or the elder a little bit more comfortable. I do know that um, in history, even Eskimo cultures have the same thing with their elders. Um, and it's not to banish them. It's not at all. It's just part of the respect and the lore right. of carrying that spirit to a better place. I find that really quite interesting how different it is from our culture. Well, when you talk about how the person dies and how their spirit goes on um one of the things that i did come across was the yuri and the yuri is said to be the spirit that um when you pass away in turmoil if proper rituals or emotional healing can't be done for the yuri then they they cannot transition to the next so if they die with extreme amounts of anger jealousy sorrow um if they mm -hmm. die in a violent way but they also consider suicide to be a part of that so then everybody who passes away in okigahara then would become a yuri and then the people that come in and look for the bodies and they actually have a temple where they they cremate the bodies and then they place them in you know they do a traditional burial um, in this temple and mm -hmm. they basically wait and hope that people will identify them. However, oh, there right. is so many that the temples are actually becoming filled to the point where they're going to have mm -hmm. to possibly build another one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you know, not to make light of the situation, but there are more dead people on this planet that are living. So, yeah, you That's would true. seem that you would start to running out of room and being mm -hmm. out of room at some point. You know, so right. I know that makes sense. But um, um, so, so, what was what was the propulsion behind so many rides that are taking place there? Um, I, um, I read here in this book it, that it kind of started from a, almost a romance novel. There was a book that I think turned into a movie about a woman who was in love with some man and she ended up, I, I'm not sure cause I didn't read it or didn't watch it, mm -hmm. but I think she couldn't be with him. And it led her mm -hmm. to kill herself in the forest and it really romanticized the whole, that whole thing. And then um, mm -hmm. after that, there was an actual book called The Suicide Book that a lot of when they would find them, they would be clutching this book. And it oh, talked. Really? Mm -hmm. And there's no English um, translation. There's only been, it's only the foreword that's been translated into English. And basically, mm -hmm. he talks very, it's, it's eerie how he speaks about it. 
And he talks mm-hmm. about the most beautiful places within the forest to go and do this. And then it goes into detail of how to do it. And they've actually marked off the trails that are said to lead to these places that the book references, which I would kind of think is counterproductive because then it's marking where you need to go instead of just leaving it blank. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. But then again, you brought up that word romanticizing again. Mm -hmm. Um, It seems as though if you're going to do something like that, and I know there's people out there, including you and myself, that would, you know, fight tooth and nail from anybody taking their own life, um, because Mm -hmm. there are ways to fix that problem. But to romanticize it that way, a text to go about it the way that he dictated the right way of going about it. Mm-hmm. You know, how would that go over in this country uh, or at least in the States or in Western society, I guess. I'm um, really surprised that's... it's not a banned book. I'm really surprised mm-hmm. that there are still places that sell it. I mean, but then <laughs> at the same time, I can't be too surprised because if we could go onto the dark web and find mm-hmm. all the stuff that they have there, then it would, there's right. always there that's interested in the twisted who wants to participate in the twisted, but it's mm-hmm. still really hard for me to grasp. Um, no, and we then, do have freedom of press. So mm-hmm, that's true. Well, uh, along with, so I did watch some interesting, um, videos on the Okigahara and it is said to be one of the most haunted locations in the world um Mm -hmm. there was even a video there's a um there's a Japanese Ouija board game and I can't remember what it's called but you um you call forth I think it might be one of the yokai And a yokai are a class of supernatural monsters um, Mm -hmm. in Japanese folklore. So they can be your ghosts and spirits and demons. um, In In Japanese folklore, though, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes, I mean, they're mostly almost like, it'd be like a siren or, you know, attractive, but dangerous, um, luring. Uh, it's right. very rare, but it is said that there are some that can bring you good luck. But you go, and there's there's a like a kanji symbol at the very top, and you have a coin, and you say something three times, and that kanji symbol acts as a gate for the spirit to come through, and then you place your fingers on the um coin and that's like your planchette and you can ask it questions and when you're done you have to rip the board up and then spend the coin within 24 hours wow yeah yeah i was really really fascinated by that Um, so it um, still works on the same principle as the ouija board mm -hmm. probably would asking for whatever spirit to come through if Mm -hmm. you want to refer to it as a spirit uh, to come through. Well, but, interesting yeah, thing. It's like, I think they said that it's one of four spirits. So it could be a fox, a dog, a raccoon, or a something else. And depending mm-hmm. on what animal it is that came through, lets you know if it's the, like, a, the dog, the loyal protector. Mm-hmm. The fox would be the trickster. And I can't remember about the other ones, Um, but. But that's unique in itself because those are indigenous animals to to begin with. Exactly. And the raccoon, right. Yeah, now they're very to that area. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's pretty fascinating. You know, I'm looking at pictures, like you said, you know, being considered the most haunted forest, but yet there's these eerie pictures of these strings that are tied from tree to tree that Mm -hmm. go along these long pathways. And it's titled here for those that have changed their mind or the possibility of changing their mind before committing 
the act of suicide, if they did have a change of heart, they would be able to find their way out of the forest, similar to leaving breadcrumbs behind. But then you see these photos of these strings for those that did carry it out, um, yeah. being tied from tree to tree, they go and it's just very eerie within itself. Um, mm -hmm. Just seeing that. So I would imagine going into the forest, you probably already have the mindset of how haunted this place is because you're talking about living souls in this plane and in this reality that are tortured. And do mm -hmm. they know if they do take their life, you know, about the light and the betterment of ways or are they stuck there in the forest making it the most haunted forest? You know, there there's wow. a lot of strangeness and the thing is there is the japanese government actually recently stopped counting how and like in reporting how many bodies are actually found there because mount fuji mm -hmm. has just been declared a world heritage site like i don't know how long ago it was but since then mm -hmm. because they didn't want to detour visitors um they they stopped counting the bodies and then there was a bunch of signs when you go in, they say, you know, they remind you how precious your life is, how important it is for you to be right. strong for yourself and for your family. But they actually took a lot of those signs down because I think visitors, it was through protest, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they um they took them down so that way visitors wouldn't be scared off. But off which, by it, right. Yeah. But I which believe that those signs also gave information on the signs as to where uh, there uh, with a number a phone number for outreach yeah. right um to at least be able to get help so it's almost you know with no pun intended but it is a double-edged sword and yeah. i believe that what remains there are only two signs out yeah, of that's it. What, you know 15 or 20 of them that were put up that the government mm -hmm. did ask that they remove the signs except for two Mm -hmm. But if those two that do remain, um, I did watch a witness who did read the sign and actually did outreach and did get the help that he needed, and his life was saved. And if it was, you know, a matter of just saving one person's life from, you know, torment in this existence of life, then that's an accomplishment within itself. Because, you know, the Japanese culture still is a very compassionate culture to each other and to humanity. You know, this isn't, you know, a cold society by any means. There's a lot of enriched and very old culture that, you know, far outdates the cultures in Western society mm -hmm. for thousands of years. Well, there's so, so yeah, there much, is a lot of compassion. There's so much discipline and there's so much honor, mm -hmm. I feel that we lack here and mm -hmm. but at the same time the mental health crisis is tough across the world i mean and especially in japan they don't believe in talking about their problems at least that's mm -hmm. what i got from the research that i did mm -hmm. um and i did see now here's what i really loved when i um was researching i came across a documentary where there was a man who actually lives where his backyard is basically right on the edge of the forest and he plays music. He's got like Christmas lights up and he plays guitar and he sings and he does this in hopes that whoever might be in the forest might hear him. He actually had somebody come out and listen. He stood there and listened to him for a while and mm -hmm. it actually saved his life. He chose to live that day. Which Inspirational is... music, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, there again, music is a very powerful tool. It's mm -hmm. a very powerful tool. And I'm sure all of our listeners will attest to that, that, you know, even if you're in a very depressed state and you listen to depressed music, it can also help you purge your system and get it out. And, right. Or you listen to something that's rather encouraging going, you know, there's other people that are experiencing the same thing I am and it's being put to music and it is very inspirational. But the dedication for this individual to play music, you know, oh, yeah. outside the forest to try to help those 
it's mm-hmm. again it's you know personal outreach and it's compassion but mm-hmm. you know how about going there at night i mean uh what would the I... spirit activity be there you know for a, a nighttime hike through uh I, I would, I would honestly, it might be unsettling. <laughs> I would really have a hard time going through there because, I mean, not only does it seem so ancient, but it seems just the way that everything's entangled, that it would be one of the blackest of black nights. Mm. And not only do you have, I mean, I don't know if I want to say hundreds or thousands of people spanning since the beginning of the first person that died there. All those souls that could be Yuri that are constant there. I mean, they're trapped there. They stay there. And mm-hmm. then because of that energy, when you have that turmoil, it acts as a magnet to pull in the other negative or sad or menacing mm-hmm. energies. So then you also have the yokai. And so so that movie the forest that i watched um last week mm-hmm. when they had camped there you know the one guy there's the one man he, he was a tour guide and he said if you see anything negative or bad it's in here and he pointed you know to the mind it's in the mind mm-hmm. um but i mean I think that there's been EVPs done out there that they've actually heard very demonic voices come over it, which I would assume would be the yokai and not the Yuri. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. No, that, that You've got sense. so much going on there. I mean, as a paranormal investigator, I, I don't think that I'd be able to go there like as soon as it was starting to get a little bit dark in the afternoon, I -hmm. think that I would have to leave. Um, But I do feel energetically though, if you go in, I really don't feel like anything would come out with you. I feel like that there is like this barrier where things are absolutely trapped. Wow. That's an interesting take. That would be an interesting take. Yeah. The, I wonder, you know, I do wonder, um, because we do have lore and stories here of, you know, hauntings at cemeteries, which, you know, mm-hmm. me personally, I don't, I don't buy into that a whole lot because I don't understand why a spirit would hang out where its body is at rest. That's not what it was familiar with. It was familiar uh-huh. with its living quarters. And, but either way to say, you know, there has been lore and story of attachments from a cemetery of whatever spirit and it follows them, but it's an Mm -hmm. interesting take that it would be bound to the forest and wouldn't be able to leave there and not have that attachment. And, you know, when you said that, that I kind of get the same feeling too, as to what I'm looking at here. It's like, you're stepping into this different realm inside that forest, which was probably the perpetual thought process behind the Hollywood film, the forest. And of Mm -hmm. course, you know, they put a darker spin on it for, you know, generating money for a horror film, but still, you know, it carries that kind of weight with it that you step into that reality. And it is a reality because it is an existing forest. But Mm -hmm. if you come out of there, you come out of there clean. That's an interesting well, There's a lot of um, movies th- about hauntings where several entities will haunt a house, but the most evil keeps the other spirits there. And so oh. it could also be that the way that the yokai and the yuri interact i i mean i don't know i haven't done extensive research but this is this is all coming from like just kind of a energetic feeling that i get when i an intuition right yeah um Mm -hmm. and i agree with what you said too about the cemeteries i've never considered there to ever be a um I, i don't do 
the hauntings cemeteries really unless somebody was killed there um i Mm -hmm. think that what is more at cemeteries are your unexplained entity cryptid type of a thing and more of your maybe um demonic type of a thing so think okay if you're into some kind of a evil spell conjuring type of a thing you go to a cemetery because you're surrounded by death or whatever Mm -hmm. reason you go and then Mm -hmm. you do some kind of a ritual that invites whatever there but i don't believe that any of the people who are laid to rest i don't believe any of them haunt the cemetery there's only one case that i would think could be possible and that was the cemetery that's up in eastern oregon that i wrote an article about for into the fray Mm -hmm. there was a man so he was buried next to it was either his mother or his wife but i want to say it was his wife so they were both buried there but just down the hill that was a main stagecoach road and grave robbing was a big thing back then You know, you could get a lot of money from whatever. Mm -hmm. And the woman's body was taken and never found. And the interesting thing was when my sister and I had went up there, I was really drawn to this particular headstone. And I felt that this man was really angry and I didn't understand why. And she connected me with the... um, Oh, somebody that d- that does the history for that area that knows, you know. A historian, right? Yeah, she had totally told us about um, the story. And it was, it was shocking and sad and made a lot of sense, you know. But it has to be, a, you know, certain circumstances, I think, for graveyards to really be haunted like that. No, I agree with you. Yeah, no, I, I totally Ooh. agree with you. But as you were telling me that... Um, in the forest, going back to the forest, um, there was elderly parents and their son had taken his life in the forest and they made their way there to see his final resting place, so to speak. But then I'm thinking, you know, what happens when they pass? Will they visit the forest where their, Mm. where their son had taken his life? Similar to the fact of the photograph that was taken at the Bachelor's Grove Cemetery of the woman sitting on the stagecoach stone. A lot of people assume it's a headstone, but it's actually a coach stone um, sitting there. And the history behind that was that, you know, she lost her baby and or even a loved one. You know, you you had a romantic relationship with one person, they pass away, and then the other person passes away, and they go to visit where they were laid to rest. Something along those lines I could certainly buy. So if you have people, loved ones, that pass away after one had committed suicide in the forest, I wonder if those spirits or energies are traveling to the forest to be with or to get an answer or whatever it is that they may do. These are all things that we don't have the answer to, but that would draw right. in even more spiritual activity into that forest because of the great numbers. I think the last that I heard, it's on average of about 100 suicides a year happen at that forest. I believe so. And that's so. an astounding number. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure some years is worse than others, but like you were saying, you know, mm-hmm. pressures from society and death before or honor yourself and, you know, honor to society. If not, you are, you know, eliminating yourself from which, yeah, when you look at that, that's a horrible thing because there's outreach and there's help for people. But mm-hmm. with numbers like that in that type of a society, I'm sure there's probably years where, you know, those numbers really climb high depending on economic situations going on. In that society, um, you might have, you know, a depression, financial depression. You can't take care Mm -hmm. of your family. You have mental health issues. And Mm -hmm. while, you know, it's very dark, very depressing to think about, but it's reality. 
And we all have to face reality at some point. And this is what's going on currently in our world in a place that a lot of us have not visited. I know that there will be some of our listeners that have been there or seen it or flown over it or whatever. Even if they visited Mount Fuji at a distance, at least they saw Mm -hmm. the forest. And again, it goes back to the beauty of it because it is an absolutely breathtaking view to see this lush green forest at the base of this volcano and there again itself it's a volcano Mm -hmm. you know that within itself has its own lore within the japanese culture you know the gods and the volcano and it's to be respected and praised and you know Mm -hmm. it's like that in a lot of places around the world when it comes to volcanic activity oh yeah yeah there's a lot of history very very rich history that's both light and dark at the same time and it's probably a 50 50 of each you know Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like it goes back to physics where you'll have matter and antimatter it's a 50 50 thing where here it's probably 50 percent light and good and beauty Mm -hmm. and then you have 50 percent of dark sadness and tragedy that all take place in the same location and here we're not trying to dwell on the tragedy but rather let's talk about what this place really is and some of the activity that might be taking place there just Mm -hmm. out of interest because we can get more answers from science about the light and the beauty side of it than we can from the unknown and the dark side of it exactly well and then the more that you know about the spirits and and the activity there and any kind of EVPs and answers. And I mean, because Mm -hmm. really, I mean, it's an amazing thought to think about some, it's almost like this weird realm right here on earth where you have human souls intermingled with these, monsters and demons and and right your 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 not spirits whatever these entities so this place where human souls and entities are intertwined and if we could see through the veil what would that look like mm. and would you want to look through the veil well i doubt you would but mm. It's it's definitely I haven't you know, this is the first place I've ever heard of any kind of a place like that when it comes to mm-hmm. the supernatural, because usually well, it's, it's a hey, the, you know, you die and you go to purgatory like it's always you go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cut and dry. Yeah, yeah. You're heaven, mm-hmm. hell, purgatory, wherever. But here they're mm-hmm. they're right there. They're still right there. Like. In in lore and legend, I mean, we don't actually know, but the concept is like, wow. Mm-hmm. And then do they see us? Do they know that we're there? How mm-hmm. can we mesh when we do, when we hear, see things, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. And, you know, you brought up kind of an interesting point a few moments ago. I wonder if there's cryptid sightings there yeah like we have in the, in the forest lands here of unexplained cryptid creatures whether it be a bigfoot dog man or something completely different who knows but mm-hmm. you know with that kind of spirit energy that's going on there i wonder i that would be something really interesting of course it's a little too late to do it for this show but i think i will dive into seeing if there is any cryptid sightings from that area or if any of the listeners know of any cryptid sightings from that area you know please feel free to put it in the comments um, and share with everybody because i would really be interested to know um if there's an influx higher of sightings of unknown creatures or even like ufo sightings or orbs or anything more unusual there locations around the world I'd be really interested to find that information out. Hmm. Yeah, I tried to do a quick, um, just a Google search on it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And nothing came up for cryptid specifically, but it's all like, it's mainly ghost stories. And how interesting would it be if because of the spirit activity, I mean, <laughs> think of dogs, think of cats, <laughs> you know, that let's say there's none. There's like, absolutely. Could you imagine? There's like, yeah, it scares zero. them all away. Yeah. And if a cryptid was scared. Right. Wow. That's a crazy. Well, maybe thought. we found something that'll scare a Bigfoot off. Hey. Just have your just just have your own pet ghost and maybe that'll keep those yeah. protected from having there their house go. slapped by a Sasquatch or a dogman. Wow, yeah. huh? That's an interesting thought. The mm -hmm. activity is so high there that it actually deters them and they're like, I'm not going there. Uh uh. Oh yeah. Imagine you know, yeah. And then what do Just like me. what do animals like what do they really see? The indigenous. Right. Do they actually see right. it with their eyes? Do they just feel it? Mm hmm That's something that I've yeah, always I, wondered. I did because... see um a but... scientific post about cats and their abilities, and of course, you know, some of these journalistic papers that are scientifically published are confirming the fact that yes a cat can see a soul well maybe that's oh. true i i'm not a cat i don't have i don't know but how do they know but it, either way see? okay so we got some confirmation that an animal has the ability to pick up on things that we cannot see in this spectrum that mm -hmm. we do know that they see in different color spectrums and different light spectrums, which right. are almost one of the same, believe it or not. But, you know, to confirm the fact that a cat would have the ability, and I believe dogs were included in on that study as well, that they are able to see um, a spirit or a soul or however you want to categorize it as, depending on your philosophy, personal philosophy. Um, so, yeah, I would imagine if that were the case, being that we're talking domestic creatures, all domestic creatures were once wild, that right. if you are a creature of the wild, chances are you probably have that ability to be able to see things. And well, either and it would be amplified too. Yeah, that's very true. And you may take that as a sign of danger and move on or mm -hmm. camaraderie and move closer. That's an interesting yeah. take. I really didn't expect this conversation to go down to the way of hmm, what do cryptids do in this, you know, and yeah, of course they, I keep, I keep wanting to, to say it. haunted forest when actually it's referred to as the suicide forest and yeah. you know, which one's worse. And it's really not, it's both one of the same. I may rather categorize it as a haunted forest just mm -hmm. for personal sake, more so than, considering a suicide forest even though that's what seems to take most of the lives there is through suicide right mm. i don't think really i've heard of anybody else i don't think i've heard of anyone committing a murder there or having a genuine no. accident there nothing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is also really interesting um yeah Really, yeah. considering the fact mm -hmm. um, people go missing all the time and, and not to get into the missing 411 cases, but there are people that do go missing in our national forests here in even in, you know, Western culture. Uh, they do go missing. And, you know, a number of them are found that they had a slip and fall case and they ended up dying or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever whatever creature they may have run into, whether it be cryptid or, you know, known animal and they had an encounter and it took their life. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting that there isn't a whole lot of documentation that people would have lost their life there by accident. I, I will say this. And maybe not a lot of people know this, but I, I used to be in search and rescue Mm -hmm. And I will never forget one of my last cases that I went on. This man had went hunting and he um, disappeared somehow. And it, 
I'm, I'm trying not to say too much, <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, when I remember when we were out there and we had stopped at where the campsite was set up, nobody else was out there. We had this, like every, like I had stayed behind. I wasn't on foot for this trip. I was in like the command place where I was putting, I was taking care of the mapping and where the evidence was found and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I went, um, I went to the site with an officer and it was like we were being watched and you could hear this distant, like it was just a strange voice, but I know for a fact no one was there because where we had our search parties were not around that location at that particular time. And the look on this officer's face, this grown man, he was as afraid as I was. And we got in that truck and we got the heck out of there. Mm. I can't even describe the feeling. Other and so, than overwhelming overwhelming but like you're not alone like there was just something menacing there mm -hmm. so when you when you mention the missing 411 cases and how people can just disappear or they're found up on a mountain or on a cliff and there's no way that they could have gotten there um I, I do believe, just because, from my personal experiences, that there is something out there doing it. Oh, well, that's an interesting... Yeah, okay, that's an interesting take, and I would have to probably agree with you on that, but because <laughs> um, with the whole... And, and the reason why is because there are so many reports that come back, uh, and people generalize it by saying, I felt like I was being watched. Yeah. I think it's a lot more than that. It's just you're categorizing that statement in that one brief sentence because it's an overwhelming right. sensation of that, that you get. Senses are heightened and you get this sense of dread and yeah. you need to move on. You need to move on. There is something telling the inner psyche of the human soul, it's time to go. It's yeah. time to go. And whether that comes back again, you know, that conversation has been brought up on so many different podcasts on different formats. Um, mm -hmm. Is this something in our DNA over thousands of years mm. protects us from, you know, carnivore activity or whatever. So that sense of dread, it's time to move. It's time to take exactly. shelter, seek shelter and or get out of the area, whether it's, you know, spiritual manifested or it's an actual indigenous creature yes. and i tend to believe with that i i really do tend to believe that because i've had that sensation myself and i had no explanation for feeling that way although mm -hmm. my situation was not nearly as dramatic as what you experienced to you know through search and rescue but i find it you know how those strings all tie together with what you just said to those that have sasquatch encounters that never mm -hmm. saw anything. Um, oh, they just yeah. had that sense of dread and it's time to move on. And if that's the case, again, it all seems to go back to the forest. The creatures may live there in the forest that are they picking up on that mm -hmm. sense of dread also and it's time to move on and not be around when, you know, the spirits come walking through the woods. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Relatively interesting. This is a kind of a dark topic, but you know, it is. that's what we're here for. People we like to, you know, bring all sorts of paranormal and supernatural and lore type of stories to the caravan. So, as again, tough as this topic a, is and as dark as it is, it I felt that um, the caravan. What we're kind of wanting to do is we're wanting to do a trip around the world type of um, event where we can touch on each place and their folklore and their stories and um, 
you know, because I think that it'd be really interesting to, you know, see mm-hmm. what Australia's stories are and especially Ireland and uh, the fairies and, um, you know, the, the, the right. Loch Ness Monster and we'll, all these. We'll things. go to Ireland and we'll go yeah. to the Netherlands and we'll mm-hmm. go through Africa and we're yeah. going to hitch the horses up to the front of the caravan here. And then when we <laughs> exactly. have to ferry or ship ride, um, we will ship ride to these places. Yeah. And of course, we will report back some of the findings in which Jennifer and myself have come across in our world travels around the world, right here, man, sharing stories yeah. from. Well, over. one of the places, because um, I was trying to look for cryptids just all over the world, um, lore all over the world. Um, and one of the places that came up that actually had a cryptid that really uh, floored me because I was going, how is there anything over there? It was Antarctica. Um, really? Yeah. they. I'm trying to, I'm looking it up really quick here mm-hmm. uh, so that I can get the name of it. Yeah, I believe we had that. I believe we had the question once. Actually, it was only a couple of weeks ago about yeah. um cryptid activity in antarctica and you know there is so much mystery enshrouded in antarctica as of late um you know what, what were the nazis doing there what are the russians doing there what why are there mm-hmm. these you know dignitaries visiting antarctica what's with this pyramid that showed up there so mm-hmm, to have a cryptid right. seems very fitting it really seems to be well very fitting and it, it kind of ties in with um doing the japan thing today uh as well because and i'll just read this this is an article from mental floss it says mm-hmm. the ninjin is a japanese word meaning human but there's something definitely inhuman about the stories of the ninjin that live in the waters of Antarctica. These sea monsters are white and have been reported up to 30 meters long and have humanoid eyes. Just vary. They may have fins or arms and legs or sometimes arms with fingered hands and fins instead of legs like a mermaid. Ninjin sightings may turn out to be icebergs, whales, dolphins, rays, or maybe even too much to drink. (laughs) (laughs) And that was, yeah, it was an article from Mental Floss on um, Mm -hmm. cryptids from Antarctica and Australia. But Mm -hmm. I am really excited to continue. I I was thinking that uh, after traveling to Japan, we would travel to ireland next on our world tour but first we are going to be reviewing the upcoming champ mini series by small town monsters which i'm really excited about Mm. it's distributed small town monsters um and we'll get into a little bit more of the details of you know the search for champ um, mm-hmm. We'll be doing a review. We will be joined by our good friend at the Caravan of Blur, Sean the Fork Chop Forker, yes. and Alexander, who, who was the one that actually made the film, and in cooperation with Small Town Monsters and Seth Breedlove, will be doing the distribution of that film. But Jennifer and myself yeah. were given the absolute pri- privilege, if I know how to speak. Um, of previewing these this series and of course we will you know bring it back to you and give you our opinion and of course again it's the cryptid and it's you know the lake champlain monster uh Mm -hmm. champ so this will be a fascinating watch for me i i've been kind of itching and i started a little bit to watch but i didn't want to jump ahead of everybody else and say hey i've already seen it um, because I think we should probably all walk over and have some popcorn and you know some hot cocoa and sit around. Oh yeah, sit on the couch here and and well, uh, watch it. And you know what I was really fascinated here. about was that mm-hmm. uh, 
how many lake monsters or sea monsters there are that are just like you've got Nessie. I think there's even one named Bessie and then there's Champ mm-hmm. and then I mean there's so many and I had no idea. Also um Cthulhu. In, <laughs> what? I had to throw Cthulhu in there. All right. <laughs> well they don't look the same but um no, not at all but it's a sea monster. <laughs> that's true so in the show notes we can put in the past reviews that we've done for small town monsters um Mm -hmm. just so that everybody can kind of be familiar with their films and then for fun as well since you did mention cthulhu we will also post our really good friend sam sheeran's art that he did on hp lovecraft and a link where you Mm -hmm. can buy it because I have, I have, we have the Poe print that he did, which was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. I've actually been wanting to share his art with the caravan for some time. So this is a perfect tie in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, I'm looking at HP Lovecraft as we speak by Sam. Yeah. Sharon. And of course, you order those, and Sam does a hand autograph each one that mm-hmm. he mails out. And I'm telling you, these lithographs are absolutely stunning when you look at the details. Oh, up yeah. And, you know, the, what you see on your computer screen, yeah, it's a treat. But when you actually have the lithograph in hand mm-hmm. and you see how the colors are and it raises certain images that you don't oh, see on the computer, yeah. it's absolutely it's fascinating to look at. So, yeah, it's a treasured piece of art, and mm-hmm. I'm very proud to have my two favorites up here on the wall. And of course there's others too. There's, you know, the Frankenstein and he just, he just did one bat watch. I don't it's know if everybody's seen that one. Yeah. But, you know, it, run it's really cool. So <laughs> yeah, see, I think Sam yeah. is trying to target everybody to go completely broke by purchasing <laughs> his art. But that's okay. Awesome you know, there, there's a lot worse. There's a lot worse things out there with more evil intent than, trying to make people go broke <laughs> i'd rather go broke buying somebody's you know artwork that way so yeah it's fantastic stuff it really is and of course um you know on that note too we have some really cool stuff coming your way it's all gonna end up in your mm-hmm. face um all things are gonna be happening all at once and nobody is going to be overwhelmed by what people are going to be seeing and introduced to through the care of of lore um, mm-hmm. Jenny and myself are really pleased to announce that uh, our adopted child is coming back called the Ranch. And uh, we're going to gear the Acrylic Ranch towards um, such subject matters like UFOs and conspiracy theories and government yeah, cover mind ups. Control and and yeah. mind control, right? And we're, we're going to stay the Acrylic Ranch gear towards those lines of topics Mm -hmm. and then of course the caravan is still going to remain with your monsters and your lores and Mm -hmm. fantasies that type of thing that is very indigenous to the cozy feeling inside the caravan here well it's been an amazing uh, journey because we definitely started out as the caravan and I know it was a pretty big change when we left or sorry it was the acrylic ranch we started out with the acrylic Mm -hmm. ranch and then Mm -hmm. we changed to the caravan and i know that that was a really big change and kind of a shock to a lot of our um, long time listeners and Mm -hmm. we thought you know we still love our roots and we miss it and what better than to have kind of a rebirth of the acrylic ranch bring it back a little bit Mm -hmm. we're going to keep the caravan we're wanting to really refine it it is the caravan of lore and i am definitely wanting to stick to all your your cryptids and different monsters and your folklore stories and because there's so much Mm -hmm. from the norwegian trolls to your fairies and your sasquatches and your dogmans and i would so i would love to really have it shine the light on those and then the acrylic ranch can be a place for all your other really you know like your ufos and your aliens your black-eyed kids your um Mm -hmm. mind control bizarre science Mm -hmm. yeah exactly no so i we're definitely excited for that and i also before i forget i want to share Mm -hmm. our patron 
um, that we have over at the caravan. One dollar a month will get your name on the show notes hall of fame. The five dollar tier uh, will get you a monthly integrally. I pull a deck of cards out and I read your cards and then I type up a big long thing about what they mean and how I spiritually interpret them and I send that off to you and we can have a conversation about it and I can also if you have extra questions I have a pendulum that we can consult as well our newest Mm -hmm. tier is um, for nine dollars a month you get to become a creepy caravan member that is a private members only Facebook page and a name actually chosen by a lot of the people here at the caravan in our regular caravan group page. We had it a while ago and I know a lot of people really loved the creepy caravan. Um, yeah. Exclusive live events. You'll get bonus episodes as well as exclusive stories and poems that uh, those are going to be written by myself and possibly Vance if you feel creep our listeners out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh not so that we'll... we haven't done it before because we <laughs> right. Yeah. So we'll share our creativity with you. And then we also have a Discord channel. Uh Discord, I'm really excited about that because it's a place that you can come in. There's several different text channels, so places that you can uh, write up your stories, your experiences, uh, and then another channel where you can post your pictures. And then there are voice channels as well. So what we can do is we can take the episodes before they're scheduled to air, and we can do a special um, viewing or listening together in this voice channel where your hosts both of us can sit with you Mm -hmm. as we listen to it play and we can discuss it and talk and um you know and you can no it it's definitely we our our whole drive behind that is to be so interactive with all of you guys as listeners um and because now this would give you the opportunity to actually caravan with us and have a cup of coffee or a slice of this fresh baked bread over here is really <laughs> good but, but we'll all have that you know great interaction with each other while you're getting advanced listening to up and coming episodes exactly uh, and one other one other exciting um a bit of news that we are going to share thanks mm-hmm. to jennifer there really is not a listening platform that we are not on right now. Oh. So you can go to <laughs> iTunes, you can go to Tuned In, you can go to Stitcher, you can go to Podbean, YouTube, um, and the ones. Oh, so Google Play Music your... hosts us now as well. We actually got uh, picked up definitely. by a lot of uh, places this week, which was really. So we do ask in return that if you guys choose any one of those listening platforms please you know rate and review uh yeah. and i know that every podcast asks that of people uh to rate and review it's not a selfish thing what it does is it actually kind of makes it easier for you when you go to switch back to certain episodes or it brings up everything relevant in podcasts in that category so mm-hmm. it will help your search. Plus, it helps us, too, um, with rating and reviews. And, of course, once there's that large rating and review, it goes worldwide. And that helps people around the world to be able to be exposed to the same type of subject matters that you're interested in listening to. Um, well, exactly. Congratulations. Congratulations to you jennifer for making us in the top 100 in ireland yeah that was amazing that was really cool i was Mm -hmm. just gonna say i know for me when i'm best i do read the reviews before i kind of dive in um Mm -hmm. so that's important as well as you know we do have some reviews i think we're rated 9.6 right now out of 10 on facebook which is mm-hmm. so wonderful. And I would really love more reviews on Facebook, definitely on iTunes. Um, 
because yeah, I I'm excited to bring our content to so many people across the world. Um, and then it's always exciting too when you go to the analytics and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, this many people are listening to us in Bangladesh and mm-hmm. listening to us in, in Ireland, true. and it's it's amazing. It's really fascinating mm-hmm. to me, and then it inspires me as well to um do the the special episodes and like we're wanting to do the travel around the world series and um yeah it's really exciting and then you know don't want to become a patron uh which is totally cool we do also have a donate button and the only reason i'm bringing that up is because we it is free and Right now, we actually have um, a contest going on that for the first five to become a patron in our members section for $9 a month, they get an extra goodie. You get your choice of a Behind the Legend Bigfoot coloring book, uh, Behind the Legend The Loch Ness Monster. There's um, a Watch the Skies fridge magnet, and there's also a set lantern earrings and so you get to choose which one when you become a member if you're one of the the first five um but being able to have that kind of income it pays for us to continue to bring you the show and then it also these giveaways and then eventually we can grow and we can start going on location and go videos um this is definitely a passion of mine and if i could make this what i do for a living and really give you the best that a podcast can would love that opportunity Mm -hmm. yeah and you know consider it a mental hug for jennifer for participating (laughs) with us um you guys are really special to us and there is no denying it. I, you know, I keep coming up with the same speech over and over again and how, how how touched I am personally by friendship and the camaraderie from you guys as the listeners. I, I just never thought that this would even be possible to find a group of wonderful people as you guys are as listeners. That's an amazing you know, community. Even if you consume the product for free, which you are more than welcome to, because this is a free product, um, mm-hmm. we just take the understanding that it does take some finances to keep websites up and running, to keep the microphone py- powered up, to keep the pictures coming in, and to keep these experiences and the ability to share other people's experiences with you guys. And with that being said, if you want to participate, in the caravan and you want to sit down on the couch here and have a cup of fresh pressed coffee with Jennifer <laughs> and myself, please feel Always free coffee. to share whatever your paranormal story is, what whatever your encounter is, whatever your experience may be. Anonymity comes first, but you can contact her or myself at the caravan of lore at gmail.com and mm-hmm. you know, feel free, drop us a line in, in the, in the email format. And of course, you can always contact us through, you know, the Caravan of Lore website also right there. And if you mm-hmm. just wish to just share your story and remain anonymous, we totally respect that. And that is job number one with us is that we always ask that interaction from our listeners, you know, how much do you want to share? If you don't want to share any of it, that's perfectly fine. We right. just are very grateful that you shared it with us because it's very therapeutic. If you've had an experience, it is therapeutic to be able to share with somebody that understands. And between the two of us have had our own experiences, so we completely exactly. understand how it is that you may be reacting to your situation. But if you would like to share your story with all the listeners, just out of the pure fascination, there's still room on the couch here for you to sit between <laughs> us and please join in at the caravan. We would greatly appreciate it. Oh, and I would also like to send out a huge congratulations to one of our listeners. I'll just share his first Mm -hmm. name, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jonathan. Congratulations. We are excited for you. 
Yes. He he purchased an engagement ring. <laughs> so, yes, big congratulations. He's been a big supporter and listener to the caravan and has always been gracious to give us his feedback and his like. So it's it's very much appreciated. And we are honored that that happened to you, good sir. So thank you, thank you very much. Yes. Um, any other information you want to share? before we uh, hitch the horses up our journeys <laughs> over, over to now um i think we're good for now. Um, the laundry list has been checked off it has been aired and hanging out on the line to dry <laughs> so to speak yes That's very much thank you jennifer for the coffee and the fresh baked bread and the wonderful smells mm -hmm. inside the caravan you are doing a wonderful job of <laughs> keeping this place so beautiful thank you so much well thank you we'll talk and soon, thank people. you everyone yes we'll talk soon watch your step let's you move on day Lay there quarantine underneath your last breath Hold your tongue Still I've gone The beast that follows is close but we'll move on Snake eyes always on my tail Snake eyes Oh